Chapter 6 In Patrick's home, in the spare bathroom, Celia checked her reflection. She straightened her four-leaf clover earrings and smoothed out a wrinkle in her knee-length dress. Her makeup was just as she liked it, just as Patrick liked it, enough to bring out her eyes and accent her cheekbones. Her hair was lightly curled, flowing blondes and browns. But no matter how neat and pretty she appeared on the outside, deep down all she saw was the inside. An ugly liar. A disgusting thief. How could she tell Patrick the truth? How could she have betrayed him like this? What had she been thinking? Releasing a deep breath, she took one last look in the mirror, resolving to tell him. Resolving to do what was right. She had prayed about this. She could do it. Maybe Patrick would understand. Maybe she'd been worried for nothing. Turning off the light, she left the room, left her security. Patrick scrolled through his phone, finding the perfect playlist for his St. Patrick's party. Mark's words came back to Celia, his mentioning St. Patrick's Day should be celebrated in this Patrick's honor. With all the parties Patrick threw, why not? He may not be a saint, but everyone loved him and loved when he had get-togethers. But Celia wasn't looking forward to tonight like she had been. The accident was forever in her mind, on replay, front and center, planting itself there, refusing to budge. And on the few occasions when she actually started to feel some contentment, the voice would whisper, How dare you be happy? How can you enjoy yourself when someone is learning how to walk again because of you? And in an effort to lighten her burden, she had only added to it. She had to confess to Patrick. But how? Deciding to keep herself busy, she pulled everything out of the grocery bags. Hearing the plastic rustle, Patrick glanced her way and whistled. What did I tell you? You look gorgeous and green. She smiled, but kept busy with the snacks. He joined her in the kitchen. Can you believe they didn't have pretzels at the store? Mark's going to be upset. Patrick shrugged. Eh, he'll get over it. Mark can go one evening without his precious pretzels. Celia grabbed bowls from the cupboard. Tell him, she thought. Before she could get her tongue to cooperate, Patrick slipped into the study. Celia continued to work until she saw beautiful carnations arranged with baby's breath in a large, clear vase. She gasped ever so lightly. Patrick held them out to her. There for you. She took a whiff. They're beautiful. What are they for? I wanted to apologize for getting upset with you the other day. Forgive me? He was apologizing? She swallowed. Of course. Thank you. You didn't have to. My pleasure. He set them on the counter. I'll load them in your car after the party. Patrick, I'm the one who should be apologizing, she began. He flashed her one of those endearing smiles. All is forgiven. The words were like fire, turning her resolve to ash. Averting his gaze, Celia ripped open packages and poured candy and chips into bowls, setting them on an end table in the living room. Patrick came up from behind and wrapped his arms around her. How's my girl doing, huh? he asked, kissing her temple. Not knowing each compliment, each gift, each affectionate gesture drove a knife into her stomach. She turned in the circle of his arms and tried to smile. Failed. I'm doing fine. Then why won't you look me in the eye? Why are you so tense? He stroked her shoulders. What's wrong? She lifted her chin, drowning in his perfection. From the stubble on his jaw to the spark in his eyes, to the gel in his comb-over hairstyle, he was the epitome of handsome. So attentive, so kind, so hers. But for how long? You still feeling guilty? About what happened? He tucked her hair behind her ear. Remember what we talked about? I don't want you to focus on that subject anymore. How could she tell him now? This was supposed to be his night. She couldn't ruin it by dropping this piece of news in his lap. He had enough to worry about at work. How could she be adding to that weight? Celia... The door opened. Hello, hello! Mark's friendly voice emanated from the entryway. The fun has arrived! Happy St. Patrick's Day, Patrick! Patrick slid an arm around Celia. Let's enjoy tonight, okay? He whispered. She nodded. Facing Mark, Patrick strode toward him. Hey, man, how's it going? Mark gave him a hug. Fine, except where are my pretzels? If you want pretzels so bad, you need to bring them yourself. Besides, it's not like they bring you any good luck. I don't need luck. No luck of the Irish and nothing. I'm beating you at pool today. 
Mark's eyes transferred to Celia. Wow, Celia, you look absolutely beautiful. He put a hand to his chest. Breathtaking. Patrick hit his arm. Hey, watch it. <laughs> the guys laughed, and Celia pasted on a smile. Mark hugged her. You feeling better? She stared at him blankly until Patrick gave her a look, one that Mark didn't see, one that made a chill rush down her spine. She looked back into Mark's kind eyes. Yes, I'm feeling better. Thanks. He grinned and put on one of the party hats. Good. Within a few minutes, the other guests arrived and the party began. Through the whole evening of music, laughter, food, and talk, Celia put on a brave face, a mask of tranquility and peace. She was a ghost, a shadow, a silhouette, listening to the nonchalant conversations, peering at the smiling faces, but unnoticed, alone in her misery. No one knew and no one could begin to understand the weight crushing her. Not a care in the world, Patrick took a sip of his drink. Mark, when are you going to learn that you can't beat me at pool? When are you going to give in? Never! We're playing until I win. One of the guys chuckled. <laughs> I think you'd be playing forever then. See, everyone else knows. Patrick lined up his cue, satisfaction flowing through his veins as naturally as blood. Eight ball, corner pocket. Sighing in defeat, Mark set his cue down. I guess that's my cue to leave. Everyone laughed. After goodbye hugs and cleaning up, Celia felt opportunity arising. As soon as Mark left, she told Patrick. Of course, knowing Mark, he'd be there for another two hours. Once the guys got talking about cars, guns, or sports, it was hard to get them to stop. And they say women talk too much. Mark gave her a hug, breaking her reverie. Celia, you let me know if he gets out of line, okay? Celia smiled, but his comment rattled her. What if Patrick lost it when he found out what she'd done? What if she did need some protection? No. How could she even think that? Patrick would never hit her. Mark. They both turned to Patrick's voice. He motioned his head to the wall safe concealed behind a painting. Before you go, let me show you my new gun. I just got it. Oh, great. Here goes another hour, Celia thought. Another hour of waiting. Another hour of torture. Mark headed toward him. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? 45 semi-automatic. Ooh, that's nice, Mark said, turning it over in his hands. After 20 minutes of gun talk, Patrick put the weapon back in the safe. But then his smile faded. Hey, where's all my cash? Celia put a hand to her stomach. Oh no. Patrick rifled through the safe, panicked. What is going on? Where is it all? Did you recently put some in the bank? Mark asked. No, I just counted this the other day. Patrick ran his hands through his hair. His breathing labored. No, 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 he murmured. This cannot be happening. Mark rested a hand on his shoulder. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Calm down. This is nothing to be calm about. Twenty grand is missing. Hands on hips, he looked at Celia. Celia, you don't know of any other place that would have put that money, do you? She glanced away. No. Unless... What? Mark asked. Patrick turned to him. The other day, you came over to play pool. I put some money in the safe, then I left the room to get something. Mark blinked in disbelief. Patrick, come on! Get real! You think I'd steal from you? No one else has been here except you. I cannot believe this. You've known me for years. I'm your best friend. Where is it, Mark? I never touched your stuff, Mark told him, taking a step back. Patrick jammed a finger into his chest. Don't lie to me! Celia stepped forward and put up a hand. Patrick, stop, please. Stay out of this, Celia, he said. Don't blame Mark. It was me. I'm the one who took your money. They both turned to her. The bomb had been dropped, and Patrick stared at her, cold and stiff as stone. What? Mark looked just as shocked. I can explain, she said. Keeping his eyes on her, Patrick murmured. I'll talk to you later, Mark. Mark glanced at him warily. Patrick, go. Though she didn't mean a word of it, Celia said softly, It's okay, Mark. His eyes going to Patrick and then back to her, Mark yielded. Reluctantly, he brushed past her, grabbed his jacket, opened and closed the door behind him. Patrick moved toward the door and locked it. Celia sank onto the couch before her legs gave out. Pulling the curtain back, Patrick watched the window, making sure Mark was leaving and then he stalked toward Celia. Slow, measured, 
haunted steps. Her breath shuddered like it was five below. She knew she needed to start explaining herself, but she couldn't move. Where is it? He towered over her, nails digging into her shoulder. The gold dragon on his shirt seemed to be glaring at her, too. Patrick, please, try to understand. Pain ripped across her face as he slapped her. She gasped, hand to her cheek. Patrick grabbed her by the shoulders and shook her. What is there to understand about you stealing from me? He shouted, striking her again and then shoving her to the floor. Do you realize how long it took me to save up all that cash? He took her wrists in a vice-like grip, keeping them away from her face. What is wrong with you? Another slap. She screamed now, her head whipping to the side as pain blindsided her. Patrick, please! How could you do this to me? Celia couldn't believe it. Couldn't grasp the reality that Patrick, the love of her life, had hit her and was continuing to hit her. She lost count of the blows. Everything blurred into a nightmare, one that was far too real, one that resembled her past all too well. Her screaming and sobbing, begging for mercy, that familiar ringing in her ears, the black spots in her vision. Who has my money, he demanded. Where is it? She pushed herself up slowly. She was kneeling now. The room was beginning to steady. Patrick still sounded so far away, but him grabbing a fistful of her hair yanked her back to reality. She cried out again, Patrick! Answer me, Celia. She couldn't get Annika involved, could she? I, I can't. And she couldn't take the money away from the Kimes, especially not after, what did you say? His fingers twisted her locks. The fog was at their breaking point. Ow, ow, ow! All right, all right! Her mouth spilled out the words, and she hated herself all the more for it. I gave it to Annika. Who? Annika Vienta. She's in my Bible study group. She's, she's friends with the family of the boy we hit, so I asked her to take the money for me, to give it to them anonymously. He sighed, holding her there. Patrick, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, Sorry doesn't bring my money back, does it? I promise I was going to pay you back. He let go roughly. <laughs> with what? She winced. My car... My jewelry, I'll sell it. And he chuckled scornfully. <laughs> Celia, I'm the one who bought you that car and most of your jewelry. You're not selling gifts I bought you. But you're getting my money back. All 20000 How? she asked timidly. Call your friend. Meet up with her ASAP. What, what if she's already given them the money? That's not my problem, is it? I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. You're getting that money back. He glowered at her, clenching his fists. Do you hear me? She nodded frantically. Yes. He took a few steps away from her, back rigid, hands on his hips, exhaling. And then he reflected in a murmur. I thought I knew you, Celia. I thought if there was anyone I could trust, it was you. Still on the carpet, Celia focused on her breathing, feeling like an abused cat in a kennel, feeling like she was 12 all over again. Shaking his head, Patrick marched to his room and slammed the door. He was done. Face in her hands, Celia wept. Where are you, God? Have you forgotten me? The back of her head, her face, her arms, her heart aching with that same ache that had consumed her all those years ago. You're just a spoiled brat! Dad shoves me to the floor. Clean it up now before I really give you a whipping. Shaking, I pick up the brush and scrub and scrub and scrub the bathroom tile until my fingers are raw. Mom's hiding from this scene, as always, fixing dinner for Dad the monster and Celia the mouse. Mom and I have no relationship, no connection, really. The one time she tried to stand up for me was the last time she tried to do anything for me. Now she's a robot, an emotionless mask who does everything for the monster. Anything to avoid a beating or a scolding, Anything for the one who's supposed to love us and provide for us. Yes, he does provide food on the table and a roof over our heads. But it's certainly not a home. It's not even a house. It's a prison. Whenever he's around, I dread every minute that something I do or don't do will set him off. When I'm finished cleaning up the mess I accidentally made, he examines my work and then stomps to the dinner table. He gives me no praise and I still go to bed with no dinner. No cheese for this mouse. Yet a very small part of me is relieved by that. I can always scrounge up something in the middle of the night. I can eat away hunger pangs. I can't do that with fingerprint bruises.
So who could blame her when at 16, Celia had fled home and got a job as a waitress? With a lot of hard work, a little luck, and some funding from a friend of the family, Celia had earned her cosmetology license. Then a few months ago, the unthinkable happened. Patrick, the most perfect man, appeared in her life. She had run straight into his arms, feeling like she'd finally found the one, the answer, her solace and peace. But had she stumbled into something far worse? Instead of her father's booming voice, would it be Patrick's from now on? Instead of a kiss or a stroke of her cheek, would she only receive glares and beatings? How had this happened? When had he changed? As a child, Celia had lied, only to escape a beating. But how could she have lied to Patrick, the one who basically provided for her? He had trusted her, loved her with every ounce. She didn't deserve him, the gifts or the attention he lavished on her. Yet another part of her felt so mistreated and misunderstood. No one deserved to be beaten, did they? And was the kind family supposed to suffer alone, deal with it all themselves? Would Patrick even take her back when she returned the money? Patrick screamed in frustration, something shattered in his room. Pushing herself off the floor, Celia grabbed her purse. If she waited around long enough, he might start aiming objects her way. She didn't know what to expect from him anymore. Strapping on her high heels, she hurried for the door, stealing a glance in the direction of the flowers. They mocked her now. She didn't want the reminder. Celia touched the knob. Celia? She froze. Look at me. Painfully, stiffly, slowly, she turned around, held her breath as he neared. Patrick sighed, running a hand through his hair. He always did that when he was tired or stressed. But no more steam was coming out of his ears. He now appeared sad, injured. Though his demeanor was seemingly calm, Celia backed into the door, clutching her purse to her chest. Pathetic shield, but it was all she had. I hope you realize how deeply you hurt me today. I've done so much for you, given you everything you've ever wanted. She flinched as he lifted a hand to brush wisps of hair away from her face. Moments ago, he was a dragon on his shirt, spitting fire and terror. Now he was a dove, so quiet, so tender. I love you, Celia, more than you could ever know. And that money that you threw away on some kid was for us, our future. Is this the thanks I get? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. I just wanted to do the right thing. Well, I don't think stealing from the love of your life is ever the right thing. Celia looked down, lip trembling. He kissed her cheek, the side that wasn't bruising as badly. I forgive you. Then his eyes became firm again, and he lifted her chin with a hand. But I hope you learned your lesson. Do not touch my money ever again. Got it? She nodded. Good. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Let me know when you've got the money.